Hello, welcome to Cerulean Arts Gallery and Studio. Tonight we are speaking with uh, Kyoko Miyabi in conjunction with her Cerulean Collective Exhibition, which is on view now through January 14th. Hello, Kyoko. Hi, Mike. <laughs> how are you? Hey, how are you both? Fine, thanks. So I'm going to spotlight Tina's video of your show. So please tell us about your, your current show. Oh, okay. Let's see. Um... So the drawings Tina is showing now, um, this is a series of work I made over this past summer. Um, there are three elements that I'm engaged in. Uh, one is the uh, painting by an Austrian artist named Maria Lasny uh, called Hospital, she made in 2005. And I think it might actually be a self-portrait of her in a hospital bed. Um, so it's working from that imagery. And because there is sort of suffering that's indicated, I, I wanted to juxtapose that image with something that, that could bring some sense of solace or some kind of offering. Um, and so I use another imagery of an old pine tree. So this is based on the Japanese traditional no drama. In the no theater, you always have in the back of the stage an image of an old pine tree. It's actually an image of an old pine tree that's supposed to be standing in front of the stage. So it's like a um, like a mirror and that's why it's called the mirror panel. Um, but I wanted to use that motif because it's sort of a tree that bears witness to, uh, you know, story and often kind of an encounter between the living and the dead that happens on in an old play. Um, and then I also incorporated some nature elements, I guess, so flowers that um, I was seeing in my neighborhood and I took pictures of. Um, so that's what's happening. I also want to point out, oh, as Tina showing here, I use patterns to fill in some of the surfaces. So the one on the left is called Segaiha in Japanese. It uh, means blue ocean uh, waves. And it has a symbolic meaning of um, a prayer for peaceful life, which I think we need desperately right now. Um, and then yes. the other pattern, oh, sorry, Mike, go ahead. No, I just said, yes, I was agreeing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the the other pattern uh, consists of triangles. And because of its association with um, scale, like with snakes and fish, um, it has a symbolic meaning of warding off evil spirits. Um, so yeah, oh, thank you, Tina. That. So are Kyoko, these are very specific references. Is that how you usually work? I mean, did you plan the exhibition around this specifically or? How um, did... Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, I guess, no, usually I've worked quite spontaneously, but I've also worked as in my, um, in the work you saw in my previous exhibition. I have uh, collaborated with the poet Celia Bland. And so sometimes I've had specific subjects in mind. Um, but this summer, it just kind of came together, I think, just kind of at the extension of what I've been working on. Um, certainly, the image of the old pine tree is something I've been working on for a few years now. And then, yeah, I, I'm not sure. That's a very good question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just curious. So you're originally from Japan, yes? Yes, I am, yeah. Uh, but I've lived in the States for a very long time now. Um, and this image here is after, it's called after Gustin, after Philip Gustin. Um, so this I made in 2015 and I was interested in his late works. Um, so in 2014, my mother was diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, she's all well now, thank goodness, and, you know, knock on wood, but that really 
hit me hard. And uh, for me, it was the first time confronting mortality in a really more immediate way. And I wanted to think about how to create works that can still offer something even at one's you know very difficult moment in life and so what would an artwork like that you know look like and so I thought of artists that I liked and thought of their late works um, when you know they too are kind of encountering or contending with mortality and impending death in some cases, as, as in Paul Clay, um, who's also an, another inspiration for the other works that are in this exhibit. Um, so yeah, that was Gustin. Um, this is still part of the Maria Lasnig old pine tree pattern and flower all kind of coming together here. So and you're working with, um, it's a combination of materials with these? Yes. So this is um, pencil and uh, pen and ink. Actually, it's a pilot, you know, ink pen <laughs> that I use. Um, and I started with this one. I've also, I also use some color markers. And then you also paint with acrylic. Yes. Um, and then this grouping here. So. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Um, so this set of nine paintings were inspired by Paul Clay's uh, series of eight drawings he made in 1940. It's the year he died. Um, and the set of drawings they're titled in German, but in English it um, translates as detailed passion. Um, and so it seems to be kind of reference to Christ's passion. Clay um, was, had a incurable disease um, that happened shortly after he was dismissed from his teaching position because of the rise of the Nazis. And, you know, his works were also considered, quote unquote, degenerate, as you probably know. Um, the Nazis held this exhibit called the Degenerate Art Exhibit. And so I've been engaged with Clay's work a lot because another thing I was, you know, I've been thinking about is what does it mean to work abstractly? Um, and especially right now when the world's in turmoil and, uh, you know, what can my little abstraction, uh, abstract works do? And so Clay is someone who, who continued to work um, abstractly, though with some more figurative representations as well. But um, so he's another artist I've been uh, thinking and working with a lot. Um, so Kyoko, is it important to you that the viewer like picks up on these references or does it matter or are they to bring just their own experiences here? Um, yeah, I think that's another great question. Like um, absolutely, I would I would love um, the viewers to come to their own reading and you know take away um, what they can. Um, I hope the paintings offer something. Um, the references, I I hope, you know, so thank you for this opportunity to share kind of the backstory because I, I hope that like that, that can add to the viewing experience. But I think the work has to stand on its own visually. Um, so the the references can add, but I don't think they're absolutely essential for the viewers. But the references and kind of the meaning is important for me, I guess, as as the maker of the images. Well, they definitely do stand on their own because you know I was in the show before I read any of your statement, and was, you know I mean I was curious about the forms. For sure, but um, 
and then reading, you know, where some of it comes from sort of expanded, you know, my, my enjoyment. Oh. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So how did you come to art to begin with? Has it been with you from a young age or? Um, well, I did take some painting lessons when I was little. I, I do remember that, but um, that didn't lead me to want to become an artist just yet. It was really when I was in an undergraduate student. Um, and then I, I had a chance to take a, actually a photography class that really opened up this world of digital arts. And um, that was the beginning, yeah. So I didn't grow up, you know, drawing all the time or painting all the time. It was just something I discovered uh, as a college student. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so here's uh, another um, Philip Guston study. Um, yeah. It was a great retrospective in DC this past year. Oh, month. that's right, just yeah. recently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and you're a teacher also. Yes, I, I teach literature at School of Visual Arts in New York. So, do you think that influences your visual art making differently than? you know, another artist for like, who doesn't have that sort of engagement with uh, literature? Um, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Curious to know, yeah, just sure. more. Because you yeah. will have a different sort of point of view, it perhaps. Mm. Maybe, maybe yes. Um, for, for instance, uh, my interest in no drama it's true maybe you know that that was something i wanted to learn more about because of, of one novel that i do teach in one of my literature classes and so yes yeah, maybe without thinking intentionally about trying to integrate my interest in literature into my own you know artwork uh, some kind of indirect yeah uh, synergy or synthesis mm. that is happening <laughs> right I suppose all things we're engaged in influence us somehow with yeah. art mm -hmm. and you're using color is a color pencil in yeah. with the ink yes yes these are um color pencils mm -hmm. I wanted so as you saw with the Gustin drawings, I've been working mostly just with black and white, you know, the um, ink, pen, and pencils. But yeah, I guess I wanted to add something different this summer and wanted to add some color. So I, I like this combination. Um, so I'll probably continue. <laughs> in this vein for a bit more. So do you find working like th this, more of a drawing style, complements your painting and vice versa? And Yeah, um, so let's see. Drawing is, especially when you're just working with black and white, it's easier in some ways. Uh, by easier, I mean, you know, when you bring colors in, so much more to work with. Um, so drawings are also faster, so you could get a lot of ideas developed more quickly. Mm -hmm. And then um, I think with my paintings too, usually I work more spontaneously, but at a certain point that became harder. And so it was helpful to have drawings as kind of references to make them into paintings. Um, so the drawings became kind of studies for paintings, but then 
that process too seemed to kind of come to a wall in a way because then I felt like, oh, I'm just copying my drawings and to, to make paintings. And so I wanted to try and move away from that. And so with that set of nine paintings um, we just looked at, I did not work from drawings, my own drawings. I did work from Paul Clay's drawings, but I cited um, elements, if you will, mm -hmm. like taking certain lines or shapes and then putting them in my paintings and just combining them. And then I let, or I try to at least um, let the shapes within the paintings kind of be in dialogue with one another. Um, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this drawing uh, is also from Clay's drawing. So Clay made uh, a lot of what's called angel drawings. It's very simple pencil drawings of different kinds of angels, very playful, sometimes a little bit melancholy, um, but really, really uh, wonderful drawings uh, he made uh, later in his life um, and so I did a lot of loose sketches of his drawings and layered some of those shapes and then built them into these black and white drawings. So some of the late works by artists I feel are stripped of any kind of uh, super superfluous elements and, and really get to the core of what is important to them and maybe you know confronting mortality leads to that right I think so yeah yeah, yeah. spoil burnout all the excess excess right right you're so. left with the uh, as you put it um your steady inner core mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so i'm i'm trying to um emulate that i guess don't know how successful it is but that's the the process or well, the aspiration well i think it's very successful <laughs> Thank you, Mike. <laughs> yeah, so these are a little bit um, earlier drawings, I think 2018. And, um, you know, I'm working with patterns and whatnot to activate those spaces, but they're still kind of random patterns. Um, random in that, you know, they don't have any meanings behind them and and so at one point I thought oh well how can I make the patterns also have some kind of significance and that's what led me to those uh, traditional Japanese patterns I talked a little bit about earlier mm -hmm. um, so yeah um, it's a great show thanks so much Kyoko thank you so much thank you Mike thank you Tina <laughs> So it's up through the show is up through January 14th and I hope people can come down and check it out and uh, have a great night. You too. Thank you.